Welcome back everyone to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial and in today's video we shall create a countdown timer. So once we enter this area the countdown begins and the thing is this is fully replicated and if we would go there with another character enter the area that I specified we run a new timer. Where it is? Oh there it is. It appeared. I wasn't in the area probably. So we can walk up to the, with the third one as well enter the area and as you can see those are three totally different countdowns ran at different times and yeah fully replicated so let's begin so the first thing that we need is the actor which is actually going to hold the countdown so let's right click blueprint class and i'm gonna, just going to use a regular actor for this and i'm going to call this countdown actor let's open this up and let's add some components. So first I want to add a plane just so that I would have like some kind of a background. You don't need this. This is just I've decided that I want to have it. So I'm just simply going to have it so that I can see because well I'm going to have um, I'm going to have a box collision which is then going to trigger the event which is going to start the countdown. So I'm going to then add a text render to this which is actually going to be the text that is going to be displaying the time. So let's make sure we align this to the center like so. And then what we need to do is move this out of the wall because as you can see it is glitching because it's stuck in the wall. So let's see what axis we need to change. In my case I need to change the X axis and I'm just going to add one unit to that. So I'm going to move this up a little bit for now because well uh, this is going to be the year. So I'm just going to call this year text. Then let's duplicate this one and I'm going to call this month month text and then I will have another one which is going to be the day text and the last one is going to be the time text. Uh, you don't need all of these you can just get by with just using one. I'm just show showing you how you can have multiples of these so that it's not so that all of them wouldn't be the sa in the same one all the information. Uh, we're going to change styling of this in a second uh, but, but right now uh, we're going to leave it be. But by the end of this video, this is going to look a little bit nicer. Now, one more thing that I want to add is the box collision so that I can trigger this countdown only when I enter that specific area. So just add a box collision to this and let's make this guy a little bit bigger. There we go. There we go. There we go. Like this. This is good enough. And well, since we are making this for the multiplayer, like I m most often do, uh, select all your all of your text renders, scroll down and make sure you check component replicates. Otherwise, well, in the multiplayer, this isn't going to update the text. And then one more thing that we need to do is select the class defaults and replicate the whole actor itself as well. And now, well, we are done with the uh, actor replication settings. Then we can go to our event graph. I'm going to remove all of this thing right here and let's select our box collision and let's have a on begin play actually the on begin overlap event and then once we enter this area in this box I want to do once so that this thing would only get ran once so that we would start the countdown only once so that it wouldn't repeat itself all over again then I want to cast to the character to make sure that that is a character that has entered this area and not something else and for the object I'm going to use the adder actor and then we need a variable which is actually going to hold our countdown information. And for that, let's add a new variable. Let's call this count down. And we need to make sure that the type is date time. There we go. So we have date time. Also, let's make sure that we replicate this variable so that it's replicated across the network. And then once the character overlaps the box, we cast to the character and then we can set our countdown. Then we can make this date time and as you can see here we have the year month date hour and etc so year 99 month 12 day 31 hour uh, 23 minute 59 second 59 so essentially nearly 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 100 years except for one one tiny second there we go so now the next thing that I want to do is set a timer by an event so that we can have the uh, looping event every in my case I'm going to change the time to one so that it's every one second uh, so that we would update our countdown timer. Let's make sure that this thing is looping all the time 
and we'll now we need a new custom event which I'm gonna call update timer and then we need to plug this red thing right here into the event right here so now the timer knows this is the event that needs to get looped every one second and now to replicate this thing properly we need to set this value all the time when we change it we need to set this on the server so let's create a new custom event and let's call this server update time and let's make sure that this event right here is ran on server. So in this event right here, what we want to do is set our countdown. So let's set this. Then we first we need to get this countdown so that we know how many time how, how much time we have still left and we want to do a minus we want to do date time minus a time span because I want to remove just one second so using date time minus date time is a little bit of an overkill we can just use a time span so let's make ourselves a time span and in here we just simply need to uh, input one second because I'm having that loop event every one second uh, so every one second we're going to remove one second from the countdown and then this value right here can ju just go into the countdown and it's going to update itself properly now this way we are setting this on the server side but we also need to multicast this but before we do that let's make sure that in our update timer we run our server update time so server update time there we go so we are done with the overlap event so this event right here you can also run on begin play as well if you want i'm just simply showing you a different way how you could start this at a specific point in time but this thing would work perfectly on begin play as well so now let's create ourselves a multicasted event so right click custom event and let's call this multi update timer and we need to make sure that this is a multicast event and all this event is going to do is just simply change the visuals of the text so that we can actually see uh, how many how much time we still have left so let's get our te year text month text day text and the time text and from all of these we need to set a text so set text there we go plug that in and we just we and we want to do the same thing for all of these so again set text for the month then the next one we want to have two more for the last two like so move these in so we have the day and we have the time itself as well there we go so now we can get our countdown so let's get that let's break it so that we get its values let's open this up a little more and so first we have the year so we can plug in the year directly it's going to convert integer to a text then we have the month we can do the same thing again then we have a day same thing again and for the last one time we're going to do something a little bit different we're going to look for a string append node so we can have multiple values in the same text so i'm going to add a couple of pins so the first one is the hour goes into the a route then i'm gonna have um column i don't know what the thing is called so basically two dots one on top of the other one and then i'm gonna plug in the minutes and i'm gonna have the same symbol once more and for the last one i'm gonna use the seconds so this is going to display me the hours minutes and seconds and then this thing right here can go into the last one which is going to set the time text like so so for me this is going to look something like this now we can go back to our server update time and now we can run our multi update timer there we go we have that and now well we also need let's say you want to open the door once this timer is down or you want to do some kind of an other task whatever it might be then we want to do an if branch check and for the condition what we want to do is get our countdown we get that to know how much time is left and we want to check if this is equal to basically let's make this and basically to nothing so this all of these values needs to be at zero for something to actually happen so let's plug in this into our condition and then on the true route I'm just going to do a reroute but here is the location where you could run your action and actually I'm just going to print hello there we go we're probably not going to see that because I'm not going to wait 100 years for that and that is essentially it that's all that we need to do we need to run we need to set our 
countdown timer for the first time to know how much how big of a countdown this is then we want to loop an event which is constantly removing some kind of an amount from the countdown and then in the multicast we want to update the text values uh, so basically the visual part of it only so now let's give it a test let's see if this works so if we would let's bring this into the world let's place it somewhere around here make it like this move this up a little bit and actually I'm just gonna make a couple of these and I'm gonna test this with three characters so first guy you can see it says text 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 we're gonna change that in a second walk up to it there we go it is starting a countdown so 99 years 12 months 31 days and 24 hours from the time once we enter the area and you can see this guy is seeing the same numbers as the other one because this is fully replicated if we go inside of this one you can see that's a completely different timer and it's not not connected to the other one whatsoever and everybody can see those values so that's essentially all that it, that it needs to have to to make it work now one thing that i want to show you is how you can actually modify the thing a little bit first and foremost i want to select all the text fields that uh, te render text and i want to remove the text at all so delete everything and hit enter so that by default there is no text over there whatsoever so that it only would appear once we walk inside of it you could have zeros or whatever you want in it by default it it's totally up to you but if you leave it a text it's gonna just, just gonna say text now we want to change the styling of this a little bit so first um let's change the render text color and i'm just gonna set this to be green uh, so these ones to zero and this is green but it's not gonna look it's not going to look too good to be honest which is it's going to be a boring green color what you can do is change the font over here but then you need to import some of the fonts into unreal engine and then you can use those um, and one more thing that it uses is a text material so this is quite a unique thing it uses an image with a bunch of letters and then you can modify this material to make the text look better and that is exactly what we're going to do by default this is in the engine folder so how to open this is by clicking on this magnifying glass and it brings you into the engine folder and here is the material so what i will do is simply press ctrl c to copy this out i don't like to change the default things i want to leave them as they are by default then we can select this folder thing right here scroll to the top and go back to our content browser then here is my new folder i'm just gonna paste that in and let's open up this newly copied material for this what i want to do is i want to have like a glowish uh glowish green text so i will have a constant three so i will look for a constant three vector and i want to give give this a green color and then to make it glow nicer what we need to do is multiply this value with another constant i'm just going to use a regular constant one and I'm going to give this a value, let's say like 10 should be a good value. Maybe the more you want it to glow, the bigger value you should give. But just know that the higher you go, it might start to turn white. And then this thing right here needs to go into our emissive color. So we can save that. It's going to give, it's going to take a couple of seconds. So we are done with that. You can see in the material instantly, these letters are glowing. So we can close that. We can go back to our countdown actor and then we can change the text material. And here I have mine is right under it. So we have another text. There we go. I've changed that to a green material. Now let's give it one more try. So if we walk up to this, there we go. You can see this is glowing. So really quickly, a few things that you can change and some more extra information. Um, we are using the date time variable type for the countdown and that is something that's quite equal to a, a node called now so this essentially returns the real time of your computer so whatever time it is in your computer this is going to return that value so technically you could set some kind of a specific specific point and time in this branch check where we check where we can do some kind of an action and let's say the time is like new years or something you can type in 2020 uh, the 12th month whatever day whatever and then just simply check if it is equal to now instead of being the countdown so a few more options um, in the countdown i made this 100 years and i'm looping every one second technically we could make this loop a little bit quicker uh, so that the seconds would get removed a lot faster than they are right now so then it wouldn't no longer be 100 years real time 
it would be a lot less. So now let me show you how we can make this into a more realistic countdown. So let's say we want to wait just five minutes. So we don't need to use the date time because it's a little bit of an overkill. What we can do instead is select our countdown variable and change its type simply to a time span. There we go. We change this to a time span, change variable type. It's going to give us this message. If we compile this now, it gives us a bunch of errors, which we're going to sec in a few, which we're going to fix in a few seconds. So let's delete this date time. We no longer need that. Instead, we need to make the time span. Let's say time span three minutes. So put in three minutes and that's all we need to do here. Uh, all the other values can stay at zero. Then let's see. So we have a bunch of errors over here. The first one, we are doing a date time minus a time span. That's not going to work because we no longer ha we no longer have the date time. Instead, we have a time span minus a time span. We can do this over here. So we're removing one second from the time span. And now we can set our countdown variable like this. Then the next thing is here we are checking whether the date time is equal to 000, 000 date time. That's again is not going to work because well we are now using a time span so we can do an equal time span check and for that again we can make a time span with zero values so that essentially once the countdown is at zero uh, the action has been taken. Now the last thing is actually displaying the information again date time isn't going to work we need to use the time span so we can just simply reconnect our day we can reconnect our hour minute and seconds delete this date time and uh, for now my values here are going to be at zeros and the day is probably going to be at zero as well because it's a zero over here so now with these small changes being done if we uh, press play walk up to any of these you can see three minute countdown has begun here is another one and here is another one there we go so that's going to be it for today's video. Hope you learned something new. Hope this was helpful to you and I see you in the next one.